Hey everyone, Andy Cole with the Future of Gardening here, and uh, it is a beautiful Sunday afternoon. I'm trying to get a quick video in for you all before the storm hits. Um, I know it's been a few months, but let me show you what I've got and what I've had going on. So, I know the last time uh, I did a video, we talked about the green stock hydroponic towers. I'm still using them. Uh, we've had some freezes, unfortunately. This is um, the result of the end of the life of most of these tomatoes, but the freeze really did a number um, to these towers. I did not cover them. I wanted to see how it would do. Um, next year, I will most certainly cover if we experience these kinds of temperatures again. Things are warming up now. Um, some of the plants are recovering here, but I'm gonna be doing a full clean out on this, this, and a few of these I've been cleaning out gradually and, and Putting more stuff in like I put some rainbow shard in here I actually had some of that with breakfast this morning it's really good um, this one I've got some peppers going in the peppers are doing awesome now uh, I've got a few different peppers going on in this tower I'm probably gonna add more but I did plant a whole bunch of um, big gym peppers in here because I want to make a homemade sriracha and I think if I can get everything successful this year I can ferment some and then uh, start the hot sauce prod you know the whole process um, Still experimenting with different things, but I've got some eggplants in here, and I've also got a Cherokee purple tomato down here, which I'm just gonna trellis upwards um, using these trellises. Um, this is my new tomato tower. I guess it's been taken over for the most part. I've got some beets down here. Beets have been doing good. And um, actually, I need to harvest one anyway, so I'll just show you guys. Let's go ahead and harvest this guy. Oh, I guess we're harvesting both. How about that, huh? Not bad. I don't like them to get too big because they get woody. This is actually just right. So you can grow beets in this thing. It's pretty awesome. Um, the rest are just tomatoes, a lot of mini marzanos. This is one called Cherry Falls. It's awesome. So when the um, plant gets fully mature, which it's there, uh, these tomatoes are all going to grow and they're actually going to start cascading down and create a waterfall effect. So that's why they call them Cherry Falls. So um, I just was curious to see how it would do, but all of these um, are mostly micro tomatoes like mini Marzano, Florida Petite, and uh, I think there's a few others in there. And then I have one squash I'm also growing in here just because I apologize if there's a little bit of wind interruption. Uh, the storms that have been passing over the state are gonna be here pretty soon. So like I said, I wanted to squeeze this in. Over here I plant some dragon tongue green beans. Um, the green beans, I didn't really have any doubts about. I knew that would do pretty well. And yes, this was originally the strawberry tower. I have had a lot of issues with the power going out on these systems due to the GFCI uh, getting switched off because of water from the irrigation or rain. So what I did to mitigate that is I bought these gel seal cases. It works a lot like fiber optics, which is what I work in. but. Um, it's the same thing except that just gel seals around the cords and prevents water from getting in. The day was the first test. I had no water. The, the system was not shut off. So I'm guessing it's successful. We're going to get a rain shower here pretty soon, I would assume. That'll be another really nice test. So um, yeah, I'm pretty excited to continue to see this. But what was happening was it was getting stopped. I didn't know the water wasn't running. I'd come out here a little later <clears throat> and then I found out the system went a little while without water and that's no good for this. It really needs a continuous flow of water. Um, any chance of the roots drying out, root rot, and you end up with you know, fungal issues or root rot issues and then you just it's, it's a big waste of time. So really got to make sure I hone in on making sure these systems don't stop on me. Um, but yeah, this was a loquat tree I've got. Um, got uh, some mulberries. It's a ever-bearing, world's best mulberry. Uh, got some lemons on the lemon tree. Uh, this is a sweet lemon called Sambo lemon. And um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys my newest project. Actually, I think before I do that, I'm going to show you guys another project I've been working on. So the future of gardening is awesome, and I do believe hydroponics is a great way to conserve water. It's a great way to get necessary nutrients to the roots of the plant more easily to give the plant a, a stronger life. Um, 
providing the exact environment that they need, you know, at the root base. Um, but I also believe in regenerative gardening. And by that, um, you basically, you don't take from the land and don't give back. You, you, you know, you plant something and you give back as far as helping the plant along, but it also amends the soil and you're keeping the health of your yard 100%, you know, in check. So over time, if your whole, if your yard is amended, you can come out and you can plant something anywhere and it'll be much more rich, especially in Florida soil. Uh, the, the soil is very poor, unfortunately. So it's very important to amend the soil. And as you can see, I've got this mulch around here, but it's not just pine needle mulch. This is actually the mulch as a result of these little guys in here. I got chickens. I got chickens and they are, I got seven of them and they are uh, very cute. Definitely have been awesome to have them. And another beauty is they love greens. And I've been feeding them from the yard quite a bit and they seem to really like that. So, um, yep, so I'm gonna be doing eggs and uh, on the side, I, you know, we clean this out once every, you know, one to two weeks. And we take all of this amended mulch and um, spread it out. So I'm just going to be spreading it out around all the plants out here. Eventually making my way through the yard and, um, yeah, just rinsing and repeating till the whole yard is just good to go. Um, this is actually, I'm letting this sit. I'm making compost tea from everything that's from the coop itself. This is a nest era coop. It's uh, very modular, very awesome. It's, it's been fun to have and use. Um, seems to be uh, everything we were looking for in a coop, so that's good. And uh, I guess I'll show you this while I'm over here. So I've got lots and lots of peaches on the peach tree. And I, I can't even count you how many there are. There's probably, I don't know, could be a hundred. Um, so here's another view of all the chickens. They, they love me. Uh, it's probably because I feed them, but uh, they are very, very awesome, beautiful pets. So I know you saw this too. This is, well, I've got repurposed um, soil towers that I'm growing strawberries in. As you can see, I've actually harvested a few strawberries out of them, but I just stood them up. These were the four inch DIY hydroponic, uh, you know, the um, horizontal, t uh, horizontal, you know, system that I had going last year. Um, I tried it again this year and I just wasn't having luck. I don't know what it was, but I said, you know, I'll just find another way to use them. So what I did is I took this, I filled it with dirt and then where I put strawberries and I take a little bit of the chickens, um, you know, the bedding with, you know, it's fertilized and then I stuff it in with the strawberry and that holds it in place. It also keeps a lot of the dirt from eroding out of it. And as it produces runners, I'm just gonna put the runner into the next hole, add some more of that bedding and then, you know, good to go. Um, so far, this has really been working out. They, all the strawberries I planted have been growing pretty well. Um, even this one, this was a runner and it's put out new leaves. So I'm um, pretty excited about that. I've also built a raised bed using their bedding as fertilizer mulch and everything seems to be coming along well. I am getting some spider mite issues, but I'm staying on top of it as much as I can. I also bought a product called kaolin clay or kaolin clay. I don't know exactly how to say it, but you can dilute it with water and you spray your plants when they're about this size. It's about time to do it but uh, it, it creates a barrier that is safe and natural and the, uh, the plants don't seem to have stress or anything from it and the bugs can't get to the leaves. Uh, they, they're no longer able to do that. So I thought that was really cool. I'm gonna be applying that pretty soon. And without further ado, my new system I built. This is something, I've been looking at these people growing these aeroponic towers, the commercial ones and I priced them and it's like a thousand dollars for one now, 700 to a thousand, somewhere in there. And I'm like, man, I was like, I, I, there's, there's gotta be a way. I can definitely build something like that much, much cheaper. And I did. Um, so here we've got 30 cells. It is an aeroponic tower. So there are sprayers inside spraying in the, in the 
bucket and they're spraying and it's splashing um hitting all of the sponges and i was just looking to make sure they're still wet and they sure they sh definitely still wet so that's awesome but i did some cool modifications to this guy too as you can see i've got a little red marker there and i've got the blue top or the black tape right there and that's a float valve that's a mechanical float valve that detects the level of your water so now i can see if the water's low or not without even lifting the lid on top of that i created a fill spout so now I can put nutrients and fill it as needed. And you know, it's just a, a simple PVC lid. This is two inch. Put it on, put your nutrients in, cover it back up, good to go. And on top of that, there's a little gasketed um, plug down at the bottom. And that will allow a good, good drainage if you're ever wanting to clean your system out. And then I also was looking at, and I noticed most of them had a trellis. So I was like, hmm, what could I do for the trellis? So I took a uh, basically cattle panel trellis and I took the diameter of this lid, which is 19.75 inches. I multiplied that by 3.14 and I got my circumference. So then I knew how long I needed to cut this. Each, each uh, you know, square is two inches. So I just went up and it was like 62 inches. So I took 62 inch cuts and uh, I just, connected it together on the other side, zip tied it in four places uh, that are, you know, uh, convenient for, for spacing. And then, um, yeah, and then I just cut out a few areas so I can get at the plants without it, uh, hindering the, you know, trellis development too much. So there's still enough trellis that the plant should be fine. But uh, in the bottom, I've got some test uh, tomatoes. I think they are uh, I want to say they're dwarf tomato project tomatoes. And then the next level up, I have lettuces. Uh, so the plan is to let these tomatoes down here grow up and over creating shade for the lettuces. I've got shard in this next one, which is leafy green and then Napa cabbage here. And the, the goal is to let these tomatoes in the bottom. They usually get to about three feet tall. I'm going to let them grow up this trellis blocking most of the light, hopefully for these guys so that they can grow without too much stress. Up here, I've got California Wonder Peppers, Bell Peppers. Um, and at the top, I did mini Marzano tomatoes. Those, I figured, they don't get that big. They, uh, they're they very easy to grow in a trellising system like this. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else here. So, I, I guess to explain it, there's a pump in the, in the bottom of this with one tube. The tube goes up the tower and plugs up at the top of the lid. It goes up through each one, and each of these buckets are secured together with a bulkhead fitting that um, you know allows it, it keeps it sturdy. But it's it's connected to the lid so that you know you can take the lids off. But if the lid's connected, then um, you know then you you can actually rotate these a little bit too if you wanted to. Not the bottom so much, just the top too. Um, but yeah, I, I it was a little interesting to build it. I think I can narrow down more ways to do it even better, but um, I really like it. So I never have to lift the lid again. I can just, I can test it through here. I can test the water, you know, to pH and EC and all that stuff. I can see my water level over here and I can fill it back up with this as well. So with that said and done, um, I'm gonna keep everyone posted on this. And I know there have been some requests for a how-to video on the, uh, the green stock towers. And I do want to do that, but I don't want to do it yet because I've had so many strange failures and things like that happen on these towers. I want to make sure that by the time I'm teaching you or telling you how to build something, that it's foolproof and that you're not going to have any issues. Uh, I'm running into too many and I could just see it. You know, I don't want to, I don't want anybody to have failures. Um, I'd rather be the one to have them and then figure out how to prevent it. So with the strawberries, the, the issue was the power was shutting off too often. It was causing irregular watering. It was hurting the uh, roots of the plants. And so now I barely have any strawberries over there. Um, I would love to do dedicate one of these towers to be a strawberry tower. Um, so I'm definitely going to look into that. Yeah, so I told you earlier, the garden tower is around seven, uh, I think it's like 799 to 1000. The ones, the commercial ones that you see um, in the, the big farms. Uh, I built this for, it was a little more than 300 because I bought bulk 
Uh, I bought enough to like build almost another whole tower. Um, but I would say on average to build one is around 300. I, I mean, it might be a little less, it just depends. But um, I would say that's pretty good savings uh, considering if you, you want something that's still quality and you wanna be able to um, grow food and grow it you know, productively. So the next test is gonna to be to see how these grow. Um, this is aeroponic, so this is, I did do an aeroponic tower before using the two four inch PVCs and the 27 gallon container. Whereas that one was good, it worked pretty well. I felt like the roots were still a little crowded and um, the tower was not very stable. So this, with this one, it's much more stable. Everything's connected together by fittings. Um, I, I guess this, this wind storm coming will be the test of time. So I'll have to do another update when the time comes. But um, yeah, I really appreciate everyone watching this. Uh, yeah, I hope to do another video soon. If you have any questions, um, just let me know. But I do plan on figuring out a way to make this a kit and even sell it, um, you know, with, with instructions and try to see what, you know, what I can do to make it as efficient as possible. But I want, I don't want to do any of that without testing it first. But anyways, guys, it is getting windier out here. So, um, you guys, I'll take care. Anybody in the path of the storm, stay safe. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, and subscribe if you haven't already. And, uh, yeah, appreciate it. Just remember, the future of gardening is always with you.